Irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS, is one of those diagnoses that includes such a wide variety of symptoms that it's easy to think you might be suffering from it. Plus, doctors aren't totally sure of the exact causes of the disorder, so things can get a bit cloudy. And I'm not talking about your toilet water, but at the end of the day, it's a painful, disruptive disorder. And if you think you might have IBS or just looking for answers on your gut health and wanna know the next steps to take, you've come to the right place. Hey, everybody, I'm Lauren, your tushy enthusiast and better booty advocate. Before we get into it, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos on gut, butt, and poop health. And also hit the bell so you get notified every time we post new videos. If you clicked on this video though, it's more than likely you've been experiencing some uncomfortable gut-related symptoms and aren't too sure about the next steps to take. So let's talk about how to tell if you have IBS or not and what the symptoms and causes are. So irritable bowel syndrome comes with a wide range of moderate to severe symptoms stomach cramping, pain, gas, bloating, constipation, and even diarrhea are all IBS hallmarks. But you can experience some or all of these issues and still not actually have IBS. Those same symptoms can be caused by the foods you eat. Check out our video on foods that cause constipation if you're interested in learning more. Linked in the description below. If you think you might have IBS, please consult with a doctor or gastroenterologist to find out the best treatment plan and to rule out any more serious disorders. So what causes this crappy disorder? IBS is somewhat of a mysterious syndrome that can have any number of known or unknown origins, but basically kind of like a Charlie horse. Your colon can have somewhat of a muscle spasm of its own. And this is called a spastic colon, which causes painful cramps and irritation. Doctors aren't really sure what makes the intestinal tract freak out on certain people, but sometimes our digestive system just gets grumpy. And the main factor in our colon getting grumpy is because of the same chemical that actually makes us grumpy. If you don't have enough of it, that is. You've probably heard of serotonin, the chemical that makes you feel happy and activates your brain's reward center. But did you know that serotonin gets stored released and even made in the intestinal tract too? Yeah, 95% in the body serotonin is actually made by your gut bacteria, which is why your gut is called the second brain. When the serotonin levels in your gut get out of whack, the movement of your intestinal contractions changes and can cause major pain. Kind of like a mood swing, but in your intestines. A couple of less common causes include previous intestinal infections and mild celiac disease which causes an allergy to gluten and damages your intestines. No matter what the cause though, I think we all agree, it absolutely sucks. That being said, if you're still questioning whether or not you might have it, there are some signs that the intestinal issues you're experiencing probably aren't IBS after all. For example, if your gas, bloating, or diarrhea began within an hour to an hour and a half after eating, you may consider getting tested for celiac disease or small intestine bacterial overgrowth. If you have these symptoms combined with blood in your stool, fevers, or unexplained weight loss, it could be something more serious like inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, or cancer. So. It's important to remember though, that these symptoms you might think are IBS can actually just be signs of more innocent problems too. You may diagnose yourself with IBS because you get gassy and have constipation or diarrhea after eating certain foods, even though that's super common with foods that cause indigestion, like highly processed and fried foods. Comment below what foods make you the gassiest. Being super stressed or nervous can also affect your digestive system as can under or overeating. A rule of thumb though, is that if you've experienced your symptoms less than three times per month and for fewer than six months in a row, it's less likely to be IBS and more likely to just be the occasional indigestion that we all deal with. That is why it's so important to check with your doctor. So how do you avoid having these symptoms in the first place? When you're just getting started to figure things out, it's probably important to track the potential IBS symptoms you experience and take note of the most recent foods you've eaten and drinks 
If you track your diet and your symptoms for a while and end up noticing a pattern, you might consider getting tested for certain food allergies. For example, if you feel sick after eating dairy, it could be lactose intolerance and you'll want to lay off the cheese. If symptoms start after you've eaten a lot of bread, you could have gluten intolerance or celiac disease and you'll wanna get tested for that too. Also, if you suspect you may have IBS, reducing your stress can do wonders to help with your symptoms. Doctors have done studies proving that people with high levels of anxiety experience IBS more than folks who aren't anxious. This might be because stress can mess with your immune system and trigger chemicals in your brain that turn on pain signals. This can actually make your gut react in a super negative way. It turns out that your gut actually has a mind of its own called the enteric nervous system which is why you can get butterflies in your stomach when you're crushing on someone, diarrhea when you're super nervous, or a thinking sensation when you experience fear. So now that you know how to avoid IBS symptoms, let's talk about remedies you can do from the comfort of your own home. A big part of IBS relief is focus on stress alleviation. That means working out, breathing exercises, progressive muscle relaxation, and positive imagery can all make a huge difference. Try learning some mindfulness and meditation techniques to calm you down when you are stressed, especially when your gut is upset. Eating more fiber and having a healthy diet full of whole grains, fruits, vegetables, beans, and good fats is also an excellent way to minimize your IBS symptoms and to keep your microbiome working at peak function. Check out this video we made on relieving constipation and increasing fiber intake for more tips and tricks, which will be linked in the description. Managing stress and diet is essential in minimizing and even eliminating pain. Another great way to make yourself feel better is by using a bidet. The Tushy Bidet system allows you to have a personal spa for your butthole so that after a difficult day of bowel irritation, at least your booty can feel soothed. After taking a poop that feels like an actual fire was set under you, nothing makes it worse than toilet paper. Seriously. TP scratches and tears at the skin, making you even more uncomfortable than before. But with the Tushy Bidet, you get a stream of gentle pressure control water that soothes your butt. Then just pat dry with a soft, reusable Tushy Bum Towel. And if your symptoms are bad and you have to spend a lot of time pooping in public bathrooms, you can have your butt soothed even on the go with the Tushy Travel Bidet. So head over to hellotushy.com slash blog to check out all of these products. And trust me, they are absolutely life-changing when you have IBS symptoms. Take it from a real life pooping IBS human who says, I suffer from IBS, I love my tender tushy. So having a tushy is a godsend. What better way to take care of your tender tushy? I hope you found this info about IBS helpful. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss any of our videos. I also wanna invite you to join our Facebook group called The Tushy Movement, where we discuss taboo tea, topics like gut, butt, and poop health. The join link is listed in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. And happy pooping.